Hi everyone, my name is John V. Srivastava, and today I'll be talking about using artificial intelligence for safe and accessible medical diagnoses. So a little bit about me before I start. I'm a rising junior at Basis Scottsdale in Scottsdale, Arizona, and a couple of my academic interests include neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and economics and finance. Uh, my interest in AI and medical diagnoses stemmed from my science fair project about using deep learning and computer vision to detect skin cancer, which I had the opportunity to pre present about at the International Engineering Fair earlier this year. So I'm so excited to share about this topic with everyone. So um, as an introduction, you might be wondering what does AI have to do with global health? Well, a lack, a lack of access to early detection methods affects countries throughout the world. For example, when considering just skin cancer, which is the, currently the most common cancer worldwide, the five-year survival rate is about 99% if detected early. However, when the cancer is detected in its later stages, the survival rate drops to only about 64%. And unfortunately, skin cancer is not the only disease with this trend. Early detection in all types of diseases can help prevent deaths from easily treatable conditions before they become a bigger issue. And this slide shows how um, different um, access to healthcare varies around the world. So it, this graph shows how much of the overall healthcare costs are paid by the public out of pocket. And higher healthcare costs obviously make access to healthcare much more unequal, especially in low income areas. Now, new artificial intelligence technologies offer a promising solution for bringing healthcare access to rural and impoverished areas through only, only a mobile application. And AI is increasingly being used in telehealth and medical diagnoses around the world. So it's important to consider AI when talking about global health. So before I get into the specifics, I wanted to give a little um, introduction to what different types of AI we see in industries today. So there's four different types, natural language processing or NLP, recommendation engines, deep learning, and computer vision. And computer vision is the most common type of AI method that is used for medical diagnoses. And as you can see, AI is becoming more and more prevalent in every industry as time goes by, which is why it's important that more and more people become educated about how to use AI in medical diagnoses. So before I discuss um, medical, medical diagnoses specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about the current applications of computer vision technologies in general. So current applications are quite varied, but two that I wanted to point out are AI humanitarian efforts and in agriculture. Many organizations have used satellite images to predict consumption expenditures, which could help organizations around the world target poverty alleviation efforts. And in agriculture, AI has helped in preemptively detecting pest invasions and identifying plant diseases. So in these ways, AI is already being used to help global health, albeit indirectly. Um, AI has a lot of potential in the medical field, and all three of these images show examples of how AI is being used for early detection of many different conditions. For example, an AI, an AI tool that can identify pneumonia, like here, can be especially helpful for areas with a shortage of radiologists, such as a, a developing country like India has an immense shortage of radiologists, and AI can do some of the heavy lifting. The same thing applies for other conditions like skin cancer or Alzheimer's. So, however, for all its merits, AI in healthcare can actually have many of its own dangers. This image was taken from the results of a study by Joy Bulamwini and Timnit Gebru, familiar names if you've been keeping up with recent research in AI ethics. Now we already see in facial recognition technologies like these three, Microsoft, Base Plus, and IBM, um, that these AI models tend to be more accurate for lighter skinned individuals. This could have devastating effects on the POC community if we were to introduce AI into the healthcare system without correcting its bias, especially since um, our, healthcare our healthcare facilities in the United States especially already have a history of misdiagnoses against people of color. So why does this bias exist and how do we stop this automated inequality, so to speak? Well, the first and foremost reason is, is unequal data sets. 
Data sets are what we use to train the AI models and, what, and they're what they learn from. So if the data set overwhelmingly favors one group, the AI will be more accurate for that group. And for example, if you're building an AI model to detect skin cancer, but all your data is collected from patient images from hospitals in America or Europe, which unfortunately is often the reality of the case, most of the people in your data set will have a lighter skin tone and thus the AI will favor those people. And in conclusion, using artificial intelligence software to detect and diagnose medical conditions has the potential to affect the entire world, especially places where access to medical professionals is sparse and expensive. Despite the impressive improvements in early detection and treatment methods, daunting social inequalities persist. Increasing access to medical treatment through mobile technology lets us address these stark inequalities and in who gets to be healthy which is far too often dictated by wealth, status, or nationality. By harnessing the power of AI and telehealth, we can make access to healthcare more equitable and stop more unnecessary deaths from easily preventable conditions. So these are my references for my presentation. And if you have any questions or want to talk to me a little bit more about my project, my contact info is on the screen. I would also like to give some acknowledgements Thank you to the heads of the Global Health Leaders Conference and all the featured speakers for giving us an amazing opportunity to learn from the world's best. Thank you to all my mentors, interviewers, and peers at AZSCF and ICEF, who have truly played a major role in my growth as a researcher and scientist. A big thanks to everyone here for giving me your time and attention. We are all the next generation's leaders in global health. And finally, thank you to my parents for inspiring me to follow my dreams and always supporting me no matter what. Thank you so much for your time, everyone.